YouTube. This video is going to be on how I installed these trailer brakes on my enclosed trailer. I'll leave a link down in the description below if you're interested in picking up a set yourself. Alright, so here we go. We're going to remove the dust cover here off the axle bearing and that'll expose the castle nut. I'll pull the cotter pin out of that, back the nut off and take the whole hub assembly off all in one shot. Just going to clean off all that old grease off the spindle here. Get it ready to put the backing plate on. Just make sure you get the right and left one on the right and left side of the trailer. I also made sure I had some anti-seize on those studs. And then you can just slip it back onto the mounting plate on the axle. Making sure the magnet was on the bottom too. And I secured it in place with these 11 16 nuts and lock washers. Tighten everything up nice and tight. With the inner bearing all packed full of grease, I installed it into the brake drum and put the seal on. a bit of grease onto the seal and where the seal rides on the spindle. Gave the brake pads and drum a shot of brake clean. Carefully installed the drum onto the spindle. Now with the outer bearing already installed the hub I put the washer back on and the castle nut. Tighten up that castle nut all the way nice and tight. And then back it off just a little bit to align up the castle nut with the hole in the axle for the cotter pin. And after that all I had to do is put the grease cap back on pump it all up full of grease and that side was done. If you need to make any adjustments to the brake shoes, it's just like any other drum brake system. There's a couple plugs on the back there. You pop those out and you spin the little star wheel around inside that spreads the brake shoes out. As far as the electrical goes, I had to upgrade to a 7-pin plug. I purchased 12-gauge automotive wire and ran it along in the existing loom down along the bottom underneath the trailer. Connected them to the green wires on the electric brakes with shrink wrap buck connectors. Now you don't need to worry about which one's positive or negative. Either one will work. Just pick one for positive and one for negative. And for the ground, I soldered on an end ring terminal and grounded it out right into the frame with a self tapping screw and then put a good liberal coating of grease over top of it. Then from that break, I ran another positive lead along the top of the axle all the way over to the other wheel. And here I am just out on a little road test, make sure everything's working great, and it is.